Hello again, I'm Murray the Pie Man here to play a bit more of Wing Commander 3. Um, yeah, just getting a few of these under my belt. Uh, this, this is still being recorded in the Great Lockdown uh, for any historians listening and have decided that their whole, sole point of history will be YouTube channels with single figure followers. Maybe in double figures actually, should really check that. But definitely not in the, you know, hundreds, let alone thousands, possibly not even the twenties. Um, so yeah, if you remember last time we did a lot of fighting and uh, then Admiral Tolwyn, played by the legendary Malcolm McDowell, came on board with a cook. So hopefully dinner is involved in some way, but let's start taking a wander around the ship and see what's happening. Um, so no one here, we will go to the lift and we will go to the mess room. Hopefully he's set out a buffet. I hope they've got like uh, little tuna volivons. Do like those mm, tuna volivons. <laughs> No one wanted to talk to me. Bad day all round for Colonel Blair. Not even my locker open. It's gonna be another time where there's no one to talk to me. Maybe the bridge? I'm telling you, this queue are not being catty Cathy's at the moment. It's quite disappointing. something about, you know, the fact that I initially didn't want this assignment and the Admiral was kind of sending me here as a punishment. Ah, Flint, you'll always talk to me. Oh, it must seem like old home week to you. First the Kilrathi Prince, and now Admiral Tolwyn. Yes, all the Will people who hate my guts. Sorry. Darth Vader. I know who you're thinking about. Emperor Palpatine. You? you must be a mind reader. Han Solo, no, Chewbacca. I just know more about your history than you might be aware of. She's a colonel in covert ops, right? How did you become such a student of history? That was my weapon growing up. Being the girl, I had to have something to get an edge. And one thing I know about my history is that you and the Admiral have crossed paths more than a few times. She can see Tallwin's a jerk. <sighs> it's none of her business. She can see Tallwin's a can. jerk. Bumped heads is more like it. And he knows history too. Plus every rule and regulation. Yeah, he just doesn't know the human heart. None of us know the human the heart. Flint. Going to get another, another Aerosmith song out of this? Maybe not. Right, well, we will save and then go for the briefing. Really, not much talkativeness there. I suppose we'd spent all of it on that little cinematics. The, the Admiral arrived, so. See what the Admiral has in store for us. Welcome, Colonel. As you may or may not know, we are currently en route to the Torgo system, where we will rendezvous with destiny. The stripper, the starship, or Gentlemen, the concept. I give you the Confederation's finest achievement, the behemoth. the behemoth. After a decade of secret research and development, our greatest minds have created the device that will spell doom for the Kilrathi. Behemoth is a series of linked superconducting energy amplification conduits focusing an output of 500 million 500 gigawatts into million one gigawatts. point. It's a Any death star. At the end of that point is destroyed. Even a planet? Yes, Captain. Even a planet. We would have liked another year or two for testing and development, but 
Unfortunately, circumstances have forced me to deploy the weapon now. And might I ask why, Admiral? Well, you should know the answer to that more than anyone else, Colonel. The classified and bitter truth is that Confed has been losing the war this past year. If the current trend continues, the Kilrathi will be walking on the Earth in six months, maybe less. So, the behemoth must be pressed into service earlier than anticipated. Because of this accelerated deployment, the ship's defensive systems are... Well, how can I put this? Rubbish. Somewhat incomplete. There are a few uh, soft spots located here and here. Oh, and where the shields are thin. Of course, there's, there's a, no a, a sort of trench down the middle of it. With a, with I expect a, a, you to be badly guarded. These areas, um, vent for the your job to protect and defend this ship. This should be looked upon as the Confederation's last ditch effort to win the war outright. Yes. Yes, thank Rude. You. Thank you. Taking a Bluetooth oh, phone call. The download is complete. We have arrived at Torgo, gentlemen, where I had hoped for a nice smooth rendezvous with the behemoth. But as is their wont, the Kilrathi have spoiled the party. Colonel, he is this too is good undoubtedly the most this important thing mission for most of these FAP games. It was you must have trained our characters and granted all these people were to work. All fighters are we some Are we clear? Qual quality people on this. Okay, please. Malcolm McDowell, the guy who played Ice, and John Reese Davis, Mark Hamill, Biff Tannen. Ooh! Lots of us launching. That reminds this is awfully reminiscent to music from the first week of the game. But it's been so many years that I could be imagining it. Say full launch is still two people. Bogies in sight. Breaking attack. Taking it to him. They are bombers, so who's launching missiles? Chewing up the columns. Breaking attack. Taking it to him.
brother flint with me.
know if that looked pretty skills to speed with a fire flying towards the end from like other ships. Because that was really kind of World War II flat foot. Insult. What's your status? Not even a scratch. <laughs> What's your status? Not a scratch. No one knows who you are, Craig. What's your status? No damage yet, Colonel. Need clearance, TCS Victory. Colonel, you've just confirmed my belief that you and the Victory were the correct choices for this undertaking. The behemoth requires some light maintenance prior to moving out. So we won't be leaving this system just yet. Okay. Don't know which weird dark room you're standing in, Admiral, but fair enough. Sick flying. 
pretty slick flying, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Now, you see, you could argue that's just using the same cinematic oh, CD3 over and over again, but I could also say that's now become like a ritual that we've got. You see, that's our thing. My, my, Grandma, what a big gun you have. <laughs> they don't get any bigger. That's what they all say. Talk is cheap. Maybe you haven't noticed, but the shields on this thing are really thin. I guess it sucks up so much juice that the usual standard equipment gets shortchanged. That's probably in the specs for next year's model. Yeah, and Christmas tree lights too. <laughs> oh, that's our sets. Right. Oh, we've done some conversation already. There we go. Quick save. Because I'm always worried about stuff like random power cuts or just anything like that. Just in general, if you've ever played games. So hopefully, if there's a lot of conversations, I think we'll call it a day on this one. If there aren't, I might fly another mission. That depends, because you never know when you're... Ugh! I suppose this wouldn't interest you. Coded transmissions? Yeah, about a million of them. And they're weird, too. Not the usual codings. I can't even begin to break them. Lieutenant, we have an admiral on board. Now, his transmissions are supposed to be coded. Colonel, I've been around high rankers before. This is definitely different. <sighs> Damn Tolwyn. He's always got something up his sleeve. Are you sure about this? <laughs> Sir, I know there are times when you think I'm a little crazy, but All I do my job. Well, keep me posted. Yes, sir. I'm going to the pub, Roland. You're not. Awkward. You could let me press the button. We could have that conversation while life was moving. No. Okay. Okay. Can I get past? Thanks. 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 Whew. That was an uncomfortable time. Left. Still not in the pub. This is the least occupied pub. Actually, no, it's not. Currently, every pub's least occupied, but. No one in the rec room. Just Rollins and Rachel. Good grief. Maybe I should change my deodorant. I have been wearing that uniform like for days now. Right, someone's always up on the bridge. Flint. Maybe Flint will talk to me again. Tell me some interesting facts that I'm. Well, she, he knows that we, the, the player, do not know about where your grandma. Talk to gunnery control. I want to talk to Tolwyn. Oh, well, okay. Fine. Talk to the Admiral. Your plan's stupid. It's a big gun in space. Ah, our local hero. Well, I must say that so far I'm very impressed you haven't lost your touch. May we uh, speak privately, Admiral? Get it off your chest, Colonel. Sir, it's a little unclear to me precisely what your status is aboard this ship. Look, I took the helm of the Behemoth Project ten years ago. And there's no intention to usurp command? <laughs> well, I'd be a little more careful regarding my choice of words, Colonel. Admirals, by definition, do not usurp. I thought at long last we'd achieved a measure of respect for each other. Obviously, I was wrong. You busted me to a tedious, like, you know, to, to you may like realize a by now background assignment. Your assignment here was a little more than no, it merely wasn't. fortuitous. No, it wasn't. You're just lucky. Fouled me off somewhere. We're headed to kill Ra with that thing, aren't we? Well, what would you aim for if you had the biggest gun in the universe? Well, let's see. First, I'd maybe make a trial shot somewhere like Jeddah. Then I'd. Oh, right. Sorry, we're not doing that. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going back down to the flight deck because um, it should mean it'll save us some time next time round. Um, 
but uh, I hope quite a few of you are keen to see where this is going now, the plot's happening. Um, so, I'm going to leave it there for this time around. Um, as always, if you have enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, um, and do leave me any comments either in the comments or you can catch me on Twitter at, at Pyman70. That's at capital P, um, capital M for man, and the number 70. So, once again, thank you all for watching, and until next time, bye for now.